Hey guys, this is Ron from Speak of the Stars, and I'm back to my channel. Um, I sound sleepy and tired. That's because it's currently 12.24 a.m. I will render this video while I sleep, and hopefully I'll be able to upload it tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning before I go to work. Um, I know it's a couple of days late since there was a lot of footage to edit and cut and work on. So I'm definitely three days late then, or no, four days late from when I should upload. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I'll be uploading a longer version of this on Saturday. Um, this is this is just like shy of shy by ten seconds to it's it's ten seconds shy of being a thirty minute video. The one I'll be releasing on Saturday will be much, much longer, and you'll actually be able to see more parts that I cut off from this video. So that would show most of the process. Maybe I'll cut off more redundant, boring parts, but it'll be really, really long. It's Right now, it's two hours. That will probably go down, but we'll see. So, we are actually, or rather I am, I am drawing Arthur Pendragon from Fate, Prototype, Fate, Grand Order, the Fate universe in general. And I drew him because I wanted to summon him from the Caldeo Boys collection event that's running right now. So he's the current limited 5 star Saber servant. You can only get him now and next March, next year, so 2020. Uh, which he'll also be releasing his costume then, but that's a different story. So you can only get him now for this year, and I really, really wanted Arthur Pentagon. He is my boy. He's my husband, though. <laughs> um, uh, I've been aware of him since a couple of years ago, actually. I think I first heard of him like one or two years before the OVA came out, uh, the, the single episode OVA came out, and then the OVA came out, and it's like chaos. <laughs> anyway, so I was drawing this as, as a sort of a catalyst to make him come to my Caldea, and that's sort of like a running meme in the community that if you're an artist, if you want a character to come home or to come to your, to your game, uh, you kind of draw him, and like maybe that will serve as a way to get him to or get him or her to join your team. And I did that. I mean, I tried doing it this the first time I did it to try to summon someone, and he actually did come. He actually came on the first roll that I did. He came from a silver card. I I'd show up, I'd show the clip, but the video is already really long, so I might include that in the long version. But I did my first 10 roll. I saved up so many um, currency for him. And then he came on the very very last slot, and he he came from like a silver card, and it like sparked lightning, and it transformed into a gold card. And it's like no wait, he's, it's probably not Arthur. I mean, what are the chances that it's Arthur? And it's probably Siegfried or something. Man, it was Arthur. <laughs> Arthur came, which is which makes me so happy. But at that point, I wasn't done with the drawing yet. I was maybe at around the line at stage is what you see right now. So I guess it worked for me this time. <laughs> uh, the next servant I want to get is maybe either Merlin. Well, in the Kalia Boys collection, I kind of want to get Anako Sashiro. And well, we've, I already missed the Weaver Velvet rate up, so that's well, too bad for me. I, I, want to tr I still want to try to get Weaver. And maybe Enkidu? Not really sure on that. So, yeah, anyway, Arthur was still as after I got him. I'm super happy. <laughs> and, well, since the catalyst worked, I guess, uh, my celebration was to just continue finishing the piece. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. And, and the piece that I'm trying to do is just the scene of maybe him being summoned, which is this part of the scene that you get when you do summon him, it's gold lights and your servant being there, so I wanted to draw that and I posted it on Reddit 
to maybe help other people get Arthur. So if I mean Claudio Bud is still running right now, his rate up will end on what date? I'm not sure. It's the sixteenth, I think. So you have three days left to get Arthur. Uh, I hope you. I hope this will serve as the catalyst to make Arthur come to you as well. If you're trying to get him, uh, good luck. <laughs> so. If you're not aware, actually I've been babbling all this time, but I am actually... So, if you're somewhat vaguely aware of the Fate series, you would know that they actually gender-bent Arthur Pendragon into a female, and that would be the Blue Saber Artoria Pendragon, or as the FGO NA... Well, not NA team, I guess it would be Nasu. As, as they would state it in the NA version, it's Altria Pendragon. But I'm an old fan, so I, I still call her Arturia. Uh I can't accept the Altaria name, man. It's it's jarring. Uh, but if you somewhat being into the series, uh, Arthur Pendagon is actually supposed to be female. Uh, that's why you get this love scene with her and all of that. But uh, they actually released Arthur Pendagon, which is who we see right now on screen. And the story behind this is that he comes from Fate Prototype, which is the actual, which is the original story that Kinokonasu wrote, like in in high school or something, and they tweaked that story to become an eroge visual novel visual novel game. So they made Atoya female, or rather, they made they made the main character male. So they made the main interest female, which would be Arthur. Um, but they actually released an OVA for Fate Prototype, and yeah, that's how you get Arthur, Arthur Pendragon. I know that there is currently a light novel that's being written about the war that Arthur Pendragon is in, but I have not been able to read it because I wasn't aware there's actually translations until now. Um, I guess I'm not a true fan of Arthur Pendragon. I'm not worthy. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Yeah, so I'll actually just read his profile maybe from, uh, from the wikia. This might be spoiler territory, but uh, I mean, if you're trying to get Arthur and you don't get him, this basically the description that you get from his biography in the game. So, approving of the virtuous and correcting atrocities, a hero who is like a knight in shining armor that anyone could dream about as a child, also called the wielder of the holy sword of the planet. His true identity is that of the king of knights of a parallel parallel universe who reached this world by chasing after some sort of existence. Uh, he's good at eating, but also good at making food, which is a contrast against the, Arto- the Artoria Pendragon that we know, because we know that Saber, or Artoria Pendragon, is just a glutton that lets Shiro Emi a cook. <laughs> uh, a completely identical and yet different person than heroic spirit Artoria Pendagon, possess- possessing the same past and legend as her. He has manifested in this world while taking an integrous form that can be described as an ideal prince or a knight of silvery blue. He- a heroic spirit visiting from a different world, or so he says, but dot dot dot. So he has a charisma, he has a skill charisma in B rank, a natural talent to command an army corps. At this occasion, Arthur has been specialized for battle against large animals. Since the allies cannot keep up when fighting against large animals, and he ends up all alone, there is no place to display his charisma. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. I, I haven't un- unlocked all of his bond lines yet, actually. Uh, he has the skill gigantic beast hunting A. King Arthur fought against and managed to completely defeat all the magic beasts that attempted to trample down Britain, a skill that denotes having abundant combat experience against giant enemy forms. His NP is the Sword of Promise Victory, Excalibur. <laughs> it's uh, it's a rank EX Excalibur. Uh, is Arthurias EX or is she an A plus? I'm actually not sure. I could check in the game, but I'm lazy right now. So, Excalibur. 
the shining holy sword that saves the planet, a golden blade that repels pretty much any evil, built to defeat an outside enemy that destroys the planet. Hmm. That. Why isn't he an Extella then? Kidding. That's a different franchise. <laughs> The shape taken when six of the Holy Sword's 13, 13 seals are released. And you should watch his, his NP animations. It's super good. I, when I saw it in JPS, it's like in love. Anyway, <laughs> although, it dis- although it still display. Again. Uh, although it still can't display its true power, since over half of its seals, in other words, seven or more, have not been released. Even so, this is unmistakably an intense light that defeats a great evil. In this work, the release of the b diverse seal is automatically acknowledged, making one consider the hypothesis. How do you talk? <laughs> making one consider the hypothesis of a decisive battle against a greater being. A heroic spirit belonging to a different world or parallel universe who reached this world after chasing after a certain powerful antagonist, evil omen, so he tells. Astonishing words whose veracity cannot be judged even with the help of Chaldea's system, but at the very least he won't spew lies to his master. He places his wholehearted trust towards his master. Deception and betrayal are unthinkable. <laughs> okay, so I'm reading... Hmm. I'm reading when you can summon him. According to JP... Um... Jaws? You can get him now in the Chaldea Boys collection. You can get him in the FGO Fest second Anev Lucky Bag Summoning Campaign. Oh, so you can actually you can get him twice. You can get him in the New Year campaign, which is another Lucky Bag Summoning Campaign. You get him next year in uh, next White Day. You can get him in Fest third anniversary and New Year Lucky Bag. So. He is sort of kind of limited, but well, I guess it's spider. But you actually also begin if you're trying to get Ereshkigal, you probably should go for Ereshkigal instead instead of Arthur, unless you're really going for Arthur. Um, since Eresh is a New Year release, not spoiler though. But yeah, Ereshkigal is coming soon. The that best goddess from Babylonia. <laughs> So, what do I say? Um, I actually do love Arthur so much. He's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite characters. Like, you would say he's a, he's a typical bland knight in shining armor type of character, but uh, he's still, I still really, really like him. So I actually had a lot of preferences up, but as, drawing here, as you can see here on the right side, I have his final ascension art, or no, this is final sprite? His final ascension? I can't really say it's the final art since it's not his fourth ascension art, but this is the, f- the third ascension art. Uh, this is basically, basically his fully upgraded outfit. And I had that up when I was drawing as for reference for colors, details, and all of that. I even um, pulled up his sprite just to see the other details that you can see in the illustration. And I also uh, actually follow this artist. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with her. Uh, it's Pony Vanilla Car- Pony Vanilla Parfait. Uh, she's well known for her Arthur drawings uh, and the amount of Arthur drawings she has. Uh, I actually had her books up with, beside me just to check on the uncertain details, like how does this part of the cape work, or how what what is this part, what what. What belongs where, and I actually had uh, I had that beside me when I was drawing, just so that I could get a lot of the details correct. And now you see actually Chris Evans, um, because I haven't drawn digitally in a while, and the way that I am cur- coloring this is very it's a like quarter realistic. It's like semi realistic, but not very. But when I was coloring this, I realized that. I am really neglecting cheekbones here and facial structures. I was trying to um, figure out how I was gonna do this, so I had I pulled up a picture of Chris Evans and I sort of like chased out where like the shadows and the highlights would be. So it's sort of like makeup to be honest. If you watch makeup channels, 
Like, where would you put your highlighter? Where would you put your contour? I was trying to figure that out with this drawing as well. And I I just don't show it in this particular clip, but I actually do spend a lot of time trying to figure out where what I do what do I do with the shadows and the lighting. So we ended up with a more realistic than usual type of drawing. It's just refreshing to see once in a while in my channel since I'm very anime centric, I guess. So, actually, tell me down in the comments below, have you gotten Arthur Pendragon? Or were you even aiming for him in the first place? Or were you aiming for another character like Weaver Velvet? Or maybe you were actually rolling in the 2018 banner, which has Amakusha Shido and Astolfo? I wrote for Arthur, obviously. So when I got him the first time, I actually went straight to the Amakusha banner and tried to get Shido. But Shiro Tokisada will not come home, so I guess not. I'm not getting him this year, this time. I also tried for Weaver Velvet, but he also didn't come, so I guess that's fine as well. Merlin didn't come as well, so I'm actually quite lacking in terms of like 5 star, 4 star gold ser support servants. Who do I have? Do I have any support servants actually? That's, that's in the gold rankings? I don't think so. Because my typical support is I borrow from other friends list, but which is usually Merlin or Waver. Uh, I don't even have Tamalmo. <laughs> like the best support caster I have would probably be Hans. Which Hans is Hans is a super good um, support servant. If you're sleeping on your one, two, three rarity cards, you really shouldn't. They're they're actually pretty good. I grilled my archer david because he was so 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 useful especially in the big boss fights like against the solomon boss fight and the and the babylon boss fight i was just like rocking a david combo there <laughs> actually for babylon and solomon i think i had well mashu obviously if you're sleepy on your mashu geez like please get yourself together <laughs> Mashu is actually super useful. Um, so I had the Mashu and a, a, a DPS. So that would either be... It's usually Okita. Though I would switch it out for David in case I needed like a an evade buff. And then I would use a support Merlin or a support Favor. And it, it's a long stall team and you won't get super hard hitting damage from that. Especially since, well actually you can, since if the Merlin supports the David, you can actually get pretty decent damage on top of Lord Camelot. Oh, well anyway, that's, well, blah, whatever. It, the buffs actually do work in terms of David. It doesn't work as good with Okita, since Okita is a quick type. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, um, if you're sleeping on your lower reality servants, you should actually try them out. I tend to use my lower reality servants for farming, so like the daily uh, ember grinding stuff. I just test out their composition there. So right now I am leveling Arthur, obviously. I was actually leveling Siegfried before him, but he Arthur came, so of course I'm doing Arthur first. I am leveling Orion. For Archer class, I'm working on John Dorak Santa Lily, which is very, very, very late for Lancer. Uh, for Caster, I'm doing Paracelsus. Paracelsus? Paracelsus? I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm basing how he pronounces his name based on how he pronounces his name in the game, but uh, Paracelsus von Hohenheim. Uh, for Rider, I have Rider Kintoki from. The Onigashima event. Um, assassin, assassin. I'm working on Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, Jekyll and Hyde is interesting. I bring them along because of, because of the assassin status, but because he changes into Hyde, he, he changes into Berserker. Mm, I'm sort of getting him to work a little bit, 
though it's a bit tougher since I don't I'm not super used to using berserkers in general. And then for berserkers there's actually leveling Beowulf, but I don't have ascension materials. <laughs> so I switched to Edic the Blood Axe, but also I don't have enough materials. So I'm currently leveling Ibaraki Logi. And then for the extra class, I'm working on Anga Mainyu. So I have a mix. Like my, my setup tends to rotate. Like I'm gonna do Fiona Makom Hail after uh Jando Santa Lily or John Lily John Alter Lily, John Santa Lily. It's such a long name. <laughs> anyway, how did I derail off of that? <laughs> Alright. So yeah, I'm just fangirling over the game. So yeah. Yeah. Should I I should probably talk about the process a little bit. Yeah. So I did mention did I mention it already? Cut, I'm so tired. <laughs> um I do have twenty four hours worth of footage and I did cut up a lot. So maybe I'd say one fourth of that is actually just me doing the sketches and the line art. And that's me trying to adapt back into doing digital works. If I really said this earlier, gosh, I just I don't remember. Um it's been six months since I last did a digital work, and I know that because I also I always record when I do digital work. So I know that the last time I touched my tablet was six months ago. So as with with any skill, it became really rusty, and it it took me some time to adapt, uh, to readapt back from you know digital or traditional works where you see the piece right in front of you, you feel the texture, you feel the water, the paint, whatever you're working with, um, to the smooth surface of the tablet. I spent a lot of time just trying to readjust to that, not to mention the settings of Clips to Do Paint. It still works really well for me, but again, it works very, very differently from a traditional medium that it took me some time to just do this. Uh, six months ago, I would have been able to just burst this out in three hours but I guess there's a trade-off because in a way I'm actually paying more attention to details I'm not as sloppy this time I think and I'm putting more effort in visual effects and post-processing with this piece compared to six months ago but I actually did do quite some minor damage to my to my hand to my right hand uh, since I drew for a couple, I'd say maybe five hours on Sunday, and then I did maybe one to three hours on the weekdays every day. So when I would come home from work, I'd turn on my laptop, I'd, I'd stream until like 1.30 to 12 a.m. just to finish Arthur. And then um, <laughs> I finished it on... When did I finish? I, mean, I finished like a day or two ago, like yesterday, I guess. I think I finished this Monday. Eh, I'm not sure actually. I think I finished on Monday, and and the last, the past two days, or the past three days rather, I've just been going crazy on the editing. When did I finish this piece? I can't remember anymore. <laughs> but since I was using my hands nonstop, my my arm actually was in pain. Or it was, it was having some severe muscle pains after. And please don't do that. Please don't go crazy on drawing and editing. It really actually was quite bothersome since... Oh yeah, I finished on set. Gosh, I can't remember. Because it did take me one week to finish the drawing. I know that much. And I actually do remember spending my entire Sunday editing the video. But since it was 24 hours worth of footage, um, it took a while. <laughs> yeah, I, I finished it maybe Saturday or maybe morning of Sunday. And then I just spent the time until now to slice it down to 29 to 30 minutes, basically. And I still need to edit the long version. <laughs> Why do I do this to myself? <laughs> uh. uh yeah, so that's what happened. That's what happened, I think. I mean, Monday I cashed 
yesterday, two days ago. I just like slept since I was really tired. But uh, yesterday and today, I've been. It's already 1 a.m. No! <laughs> I need to go to work tomorrow! Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, um, I should just you know, shut up. There's a couple of minutes left. Please enjoy the rest of the video. I'll come back for the ending credits, I guess. Should I? I mean, I've, I've talked for pretty much 30 minutes at this point. <laughs> anyway, well, let's just, you know, talk about the piece as we go. Let's wing it, whatever. Let's not even redo the recording anymore. So we're actually working on this sword right now, and I realized after well, pretty much finishing the entire thing that the proportions are really, really off, and the pommel and the hilt are way too big for Arthur's hands. It's really... It should fit in, in, in his hand. This would feel more like a club than a sword. But at this point, I was really tired and eager to finish it, so I didn't fix it anymore. And that's still something I need to improve upon as an artist. And then this part, his pommel, was actually <laughs> annoying to work on, or rather, it was hard to figure out. I was trying to figure out how I'd get that goldy, um, brownish, bronzy type of thing. And then he has this, like, inverted cone in the middle of the sword, and like, uh, I, I don't know how I could pull it off. I'm not even sure if I managed to pull it off at all. Um, like, I, I actually just copied somewhat how it was done in the official art, since it's the official art, if it's gonna do that, it I can try to replicate it to some extent. And the way that I actually managed to convince myself, at least, to make it look like that it's an inverted cone was by adding those lines of circles in the middle and by blending the, the shadows in a way that it would form smaller circles, which is what you see right now, which, ma which makes it look like either a protruding cone or an inverted cone. But actually, for me, either way just works at this point. Um, yeah. I actually do go back to the face several times because I was still kind of unhappy with how it looked. I felt like it was really off center. It's leaning to the left a little bit. Even though I can see that it's, it's leaning, but whenever I fixed it, it just screwed up even more. So I just left it as, as, it, as it was at this point. I just wanted to deepen the shadows to create some really good contrast. And then for the background, you don't see it here, but I actually wanted to go with the Chaldea summoning background with the dark blue and the black and the stars, but I felt like it would be too much and Arthur's already wearing blue, so I wanted something that, that would contrast well against his outfit. And I'm actually surprised it didn't blend in with his hair all that much, I guess because of the white gadget in the middle, but uh... I guess it's fine. <laughs> I couldn't. I actually did some highlights on him, on his clothes. I added like yellow highlights on the edge of his clothes, but because everything's yellow or gold, I just it just blended in, <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, I put that yellowy gradient on his head, around his chest, so that there's like a light, an overlay lighting on top of him, so it would blend in with the entire piece. That's why Arthur looks a bit more yellowish than the than at the start so that it looks like he's actually part of the summoning system and not just like pasted on top of the background so this the, like this like the post processing thing i was talking about in the past i wouldn't really bother with those post processing integration type of things but um as a graphic, graphic designer i've learned anyway we are finally at the end of the video I hope you enjoyed. I hope Arthur comes to your child if he hasn't already. If he has, congratulations. Uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and DeviantArt. Please stay tuned for Saturday. I'll be releasing the long version then. Until then, see you around.